All right, welcome back to LSAT Games. Hello and welcome. I hope I'm seeing some Redditors. I'm I'm spending a bunch of time on the Reddit LSAT board and there's a lot of good stuff on there and there's some misinformation and I would love to be helpful to any and everyone who is preparing for the test. So I thought that I would jump ahead a little bit. I was working through all the prep tests in order, but I just don't work fast enough to imagine that I'm gonna get to the newer tests anytime soon. And so I'm just gonna start working in reverse chronological order, starting with the most recent prep test that I have access to, prep test 90. So that's what you see in front of you. This was the May 2020 exam, a very special exam, because this was the first of the LSAT flex. That is now, I guess, the way the test is going to be moving forward. That is, rather than have five sections, four of which are scored, one of which is experimental, this test just has four sections, three of which are scored, one is experimental. This particular test had two of the arguments sections, again, only one of which was scored, and so this right here, section three, is our one and only games section. And we are going to begin, as always, with game number one. So we've got questions one through five here, and let's jump right in. An investigator is trying to determine the order in which five successive phone calls were made. One call each to Quinn, Roth, Smith, Tang, and Vitt. Each call was of one one of two types, local or non-local, following facts have been established thus far. Ooh, like a detective story. So this is pretty clearly a two-dimensional order game. Our main objective here is to place these elements in order. Let's go ahead and jot down our elements. Q, R, S, T, and V. But in addition to placing those calls in order, we're also trying to figure out, oh wait, what I call this? Okay, it's not really two-dimensional because it's not as if in each of the five slots we're about to set up that there were two different phones calls. Instead, hmm, I'm almost tempted to set this up like an in and out game. So an in and out game, of course, is a special kind of grouping game where most, if not all, of your clues are conditional clues. And I will say this, I don't see any conditional clues here. So I don't think I'm going to set this up as an in and out game, but it's also not really a two-dimensional order game. So again, a two-dimensional order game would have your slots one, two, three, four, five, and in each slot, there would be two different items that we're arranging. I think there's a game I did recently where it was like something was sold either to a private collector or to to a museum in three different periods, but each period had two paintings. That's not happening here. I'm gonna set this up as one, two, three, four, five. So this is a one-to-one -one order game in that sense. I just wanna keep in mind that as I figure out what goes where, I also need to figure out are they local or are they non-local? So I think I'm probably just gonna use a subscript as I go to try and figure out what's what. Maybe the clues will better reveal what we're supposed to do. So let's go ahead and jump into the clues. Quinn's call was a meeting immediately before Vitz, but at some time after Smith's. So two pieces of information here. Smith dot 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 Q is our order clue here. But then we also have this blocking clue. Q was immediately before V. We can combine those if we want. We could keep them separate. No special reason we have to do it either way. Smith's call was of a different type than Vitz. So I'm going to do something a little strange here. I was going to say I'm going to do a lowercase s and v with a circle and a slash through like this. But the problem is a lowercase s and v look the same as an uppercase s and v. So I don't think that's going to be a great symbol. Um, guess I could set this up conditionally. I don't really want to do that. Like SL leads to VN and vice versa. How do I want to do this? You know what? I take it back. It is best to do this one as a two-dimensional order game. It's just that the second dimension, the type of call, I can reuse multiple times. So for all I know, I can use five L's here. I can use five N's. I can use any combination of L's and N's as long as I have five total elements. So I actually am going to set this up two-dimensionally. As far as how to do this clue, I think what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to set up my blanks there, and I'm going to put S and V on the bottom. That's not what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to do L's and N's, but I think that's that's the easiest way to show S and V have to be different types of calls. Quinn's call and Tang's call were both local, so simple enough, we can actually just set that up on our elements right there. T is a local call. Q is a local call, and so we know for sure those two elements. The third call was non-local, very nice. That can go right on our diagram. Third call is always gonna be non-local. Now, how about our deductions? I've got this big S dot dot QV clue. So a few things I can say for sure. Uh, Q cannot be first or last. S cannot go either fifth or fourth, because QV 
two elements have to go after S. And in the same way, these are often symmetrical. V cannot go first, V cannot go second. For that matter though, we also know that neither T nor Q can be the third call because they have to be local calls. And if Q can't be third, that actually means that V can't be fourth. Now I wanna be careful about presuming that means Q has to go like second. That's not necessarily true. I could still imagine a scenario like S, Q, V. And it seems to me right now like that would work. I'm not seeing a way to combine the information that S and V are different types of calls with some of the deductions we've already figured out. And R is our least restricted element here. There are not any clues about R. So R is gonna kind of slot in wherever we need toward the end of any given scenario. But that's pretty good. I think that's about it. Okay, number one, which one of the following could be an accurate matching of the calls to their types listed in order from the first call to the last? Classic pick a clue style question. So S dot dot Q dot dot V, or actually specifically Q and then V. Well, A is out because Q and V aren't next to each other. B looks good, C looks good. Good, D looks good, and E looks good. S is always before Q. B looks good, C looks good, D looks good, E looks good. Uh, Q and T are both local calls. Well, B looks good, C looks good, Q and T local, D looks good. Mm. E is no good. Q is not a non-local call, so I don't like answer choice E. S and V always have to be different. Well, B has S local, V non-local, that's good. C has S local, V local, that's no good. D has S local, V non-local, that is good. So we're down to B versus D. And then the third call is non-local. B is good, D is no good. Third call, local. And so I can cross off D, circle answer choice B. Let's get into our specific questions, number two, if Roth's call was second, which one of the following must be true? So we're doing a must be true here. Let's go ahead and get that in our diagram. Roth's call is second. Of course, we know the third call is non-local. I didn't deduce this specifically before, but maybe I should. S can only ever go second. Wait, no, not S. Q. Q can only ever go second or fourth. So what that means in this particular scenario, since R is going second, is that Q is going to have to go fourth. Q, of course, we know is local. V always goes after Q, and so that's gonna slot into the fifth spot there. Can we figure out where S and T go? Yes, I was about to say no, I thought it was a coin flip, but remember, T is local, so there's no way T could fit into slot three. So T has to go first, S would have to go third, and then the only thing I don't know here is whether R or V are local or non-local calls. I think I'm just gonna put in a little coin flip. Although technically this one's not a coin flip, it's not like if one is non-local, the other's local. Oh wait, never mind. this is silly. Um, S and V are never the same thing. So if S is non-local, V has to be local. So it's really only Roth that we have to say, well, we're not sure, could be N, could be L. Must be true. A, the first call was non-local, that is not true. B, the second call was non-local, uh, could be true, not a must be true. C, the fourth call was non-local, that is not true. The first call was local, that is it, two is D. If you've watched my videos, I've talked about this before, but this is something that's come up recently as I you know, advise a few students on the Reddit board. One of the easiest ways to pick up time is to stop checking answer choices when you don't need to. We have found the must be true. There is no reason to read E just to make sure that it's not a must be true. Something will be wrong with E. Trust the process, trust your work, move on. All right, number three is next. If Tang's call was fifth, so let's put in our two dimensionality. Tang's call is fifth. Which of the following could be true? Well, if Tang is fifth, we know of course that uh, Tang is less L, local, so T over L. Uh, we always know the third call is non-local, and I'm thinking about that S dot dot Q V. Q right now can't go fourth. Okay, this is good. Q can't go fourth, which again is one of the two places Q can ever be, because then V would have to go fifth, which is impossible here. So Q for sure is second. Q is always local. That makes V third. That means that S has to go first. S and V are always different, so S is gonna have to be local here. And there it is, that least restricted element just slotting in wherever we have left over. And once again, I don't see a particular reason to think it has to be either local or non-local. So I'm guessing on it could be true that they're gonna have to say something about the fourth call or wherever Roth is. Uh, a could be true, fourth call is non-local. Circle answer choice A. And again, 
don't check B, C, D, E. We've done the process correctly. There must be something wrong with the other four. Interesting game, all specific questions after that pick a clue. Unless, are there questions on the next page? Nope, okay. All specific questions, four and five also specific. So I'm just gonna keep going. I'm going to plug in number four here. If Roth's call was local, which one of the following must be false? Interesting, so they're not telling me where something is. They're just telling me that R is local. Well, of course, we always know that third call is non-local, so this is really another way to say that R cannot go third. Once we know that R is not third, we already know T is not third, we already know that Q is not third, so really this means that either S or V has to be third. So maybe it's worth setting that up and checking out both of those possibilities. What happens if S is third? What happens if V is third? Of course, S has to be before Q and V, and so if S is third, it would be Q, V, four, and five. Q is always local, S and V are always different, so V would be local here. And then it seems to me that R and T could just kind of switch now between slots one and two. And of course, wherever R ends up would be a local call. So at least one of these is local and the other one we're not sure about. If it's V that's going third instead, well, then it would have to be S, Q, V in one, two, three. Of course, V would be non-local in that case. S would be local. Q is always local. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Previously, well, T is always local too. So it looks like one and two are gonna have to be local no matter what in that first scenario. And then do we have the same thing happening in four or five where it's just R, T switching around? I think we do. So I think we can say for sure wherever they are, they're local. So actually in both of these scenarios, no matter what we do, one, two, four, and five are all local calls. And three, of course, as, as we were given is a non-local call. All right. Uh, uh, must be false. Quinn's call was fourth. No, that's a possibility. Cross off A. Roth's call was second. No, that's a possibility. Cross off B. Smith's call was second. That is never possible. Circle answer choice C. Smith was either first or third, but could not go second in that particular scenario. Just one more question here. Looks like we need to extend our scenario. If the first call was non-local, then for exactly how many of the recipient's calls can their positions in the order of calls be determined? So if the first call for sure is non-local, which gives us two non-local calls. What else can we say? Interesting, it doesn't feel like we can say much, but I think maybe something's gonna happen with this SQV block. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try out Q second. Man, I am really running out of room here. All right, advantage of using this little electronic notebook. I'm just gonna move everything up. All right, let's go ahead and try out two different scenarios. One where Q is second, one where Q is fourth. Of course, we always know that's gonna mean V follows wherever Q is. And the thing about that is V and S can never share the same type of call. And so that tells me, since S would have to go before Q, this first scenario actually is not possible. So in fact, Q and V have to go four and five now. What can I say from there though? Of course, I know Q is L. T is also L, so T is gonna have to go second because that's the only other place I can fit a local call right now. And then since S is gonna be first or third right now, S has to be non-local, which means V will be local. But as far as an ordering, can I figure out for sure whether it's R or S? I don't think so. I think that is a coin flip. And so I would say there are three, answer choice C, three elements that we know for sure uh, given a first call is non-local. All right, what have we got? B, D, A, C, C, Badak, Badak, B, D, A, C, C. One through five, Badak, B, D, A, C, C. Well done to us. So I would say that's a pretty straightforward game. A Little bit iffy there at the beginning in terms of how do I keep track of local versus non-local. I think in the end we did the right thing going ahead and setting that up as a two-dimensional order setup rather than trying to combine some kind of in-out situation at the same time. But definitely a game I can imagine doing first on the section that would be good pacing. I hope that was helpful to you. Comment down below with any questions you have. If you have a game suggestion for the future, let me know. And otherwise I'll see y'all next time.